Uh, we're going to get going here, and God help us with this uh, final phase tonight. Um, I told you a minute ago that I was going to leave bylaws, and that was not true. I'm going to stick with them, and uh, I just I thought maybe we're better off just with continuity and, and thoroughly covering a subject, so I don't don't start kind of ping-ponging us around from different, uh, different topics. I just wrote up here um, on the screen, uh, it says the most difficult problem of bylaws um, for a, uh, a church. Um, does anybody have any idea what that might be? Let me guess what that most difficult thing. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm sorry. We got two hands up. Go ahead, Andy. Uh, no, I just liked what you said at the beginning, last class, um, meaning the last hour. Um, uh, oh, a critical process could easily lead to a critical spirit. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you're just commenting on something we said that helped you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking would be the most difficult problem. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was. I'm asking the question a little bit different, but that's excellent. You, your hand was up there, sir? Okay. <laughs> Legalism? Um, yeah, I, I could have asked the question more clearly, but I mean, I know I, that's good also. Um, what I'm going to say, like for our churches writing bylaws, what I think the most difficult problem for which there is no really no right answer or wrong answer is just trying to find that um, how you define the pastor and I, I don't even want to use the word checks and balances but because that's can can be used the wrong way but how do you give the pastor the authority that you really want him to have in the church but then how what protections are there for the congregation or you could even put it this way, what covering is, for, is there for the pastor to help him when he starts to, you know, you know, uh, you know bump into some of the ups and downs that you can have over, over decades of ministry. And um, different churches in Greater Grace have really solved this problem uh, in different ways. And we're not really, we're not in the business home base, we're not like bylaw police. You know, there's churches all over the world. Um, I think Pastor um, Shabelli and his team have a pretty good handle on what's going on in Africa. Uh, but part of that is is the way the governments treat the churches there. It's it's different. They, they're like very interested in um, you know in in this country. It's more hands off. You know, anybody can be a, you can believe anything and be a church. It's not that way in Ghana. I think they're more interested in, in certain things and um, so. We got a good handle on what's going on there. I think Pastor Schaller, just because of some of his, you know, he's kind of left a trail of churches in his wake, Finland and, and then Hungary. So he kind of knows what's going on there. Um, and I don't mean this in any way to cast any doubt on anybody, but I've got like maybe um, Pastor Walsh in um, Thailand. I have no idea. Maybe someone else does. I don't even know if that church is registered. I think it is. We've got Pastor Stan in Peru. I, you know, maybe Pastor Hadley's in touch with. I'm just saying, because of different people and where they came from and how the church was birthed, we have varying closeness or distance from what's going on there. Uh, but that's all just to say there can be any number of different church structures out there, and people have, you know, tried different ways um, to um, just have a. Um, like I would say, a balance of, of covering, but also leadership. And like spiritually, um, we really th think of ourselves as what I would call like a leadership church. Who's the guy at Greater Grace? It's Pastor Schaller. He's, I mean, why are we here? You know, I'm, I'm here to hear Pastor Schaller preach and because I trust his leadership and I want his influence on my life and I want to be like him when I grow up. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's how I think about him, you know? I, you know I, and we got people from all over the world. I mean, what... You know, Pastor Javid didn't come here because he liked, you know, you know, who was on the board of elders. He came here because he wants to be discipled, be part of this ministry, you know. So that's like, and we want to give, it's like Pastor Schaller, when you get up in that pulpit, cut loose, lead us, you know, lead us in, in, in outreach, lead us in 
worldwide missions. Lead us in discipleship. Lead us in purity. And, and then just as a body member, like, you know, pastor, if you think that, um, you know, it, it might be wise, and, and this has not been talked about, but, I mean, you think it might be wise to move the church from here over to uh, Perry Hall or to Bel Air or to, you know, I don't know, um, Pasadena or something. It's like, you know, yeah. I mean, of course I would sell my house and move. You know, Is your hand written? You're stitching. Okay, I'm going to stop. But you, and you go ahead and ask your questions. And I'll give you the mic. I'm sorry. Speak into the microphone here. So I was just addressing how, you know, a, a written down structure tries to balance the leadership, you know, needs of the church and the pastor, but also the protection. Go ahead. Uh, my question is just, <clears throat> I guess, out of experience visiting a lot of different churches, is there like a certain number, like the body should be in order to have like a structured government? Because a lot of places I've been, maybe there's 15, 20, 30 people. Right. Um, and then also another question is for like for women, like can there be women trustees, and um, can they function in that? Like, uh, say you're in a church that has 80 percent women, right? Um, like, it's, is it a possibility that it would be wise to have them, or is it strictly like pastors can't have them okay. in the leadership? Got it. So there's two questions. Um, Number one, a small church, and number two, the role of women. And uh, we might hit this again, but I'm just, it's being asked now. You guys are thinking about it. I want to address it. Okay. Grant, this, this is kind of what we are, I'm not saying we've gotten the message out there, but this is what we are kind of recommending to small churches, okay, is, um, you know, again, you, the syndrome is that, um, you know, Richard Shepard goes to, you know, I don't know, Washington, D.C. or something, starts a church. Um, he's got some young guys, and he is like everything to them. Okay, you are their spiritual father. You led them to Christ. They're, they're hanging on your every word. Um, you know, they're modeling their lives after you. You are discipling them and training them. And uh, they may be young. Uh, the church may be small. And... You take one of those guys and put them on a board, like a board of elders or something, and there's maybe kind of two problems that could happen. Uh, number one, just general novice traits. You know, the kid, someone gets on this board, and it's like, hey, I'm somebody in the church now, and, you know, bad things start to happen because of that. And then the second problem that occurs is that they're on a board and you're on the board with them, but you're still everything to them. So in their minds, because of their spiritual relationship with you, and they're in no position to, like, correct you or tell you when you're wrong or say, no, wait a minute, can we think about this? You know what I'm saying? And I, I would say I still, like, it's not easy for me to question the people over me. You know, I, 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 I'm with Pastor Lange enough, and we've had enough, you know, knock down drag outs. I know I can get away with it. And, but, I'm, you know, and I'm just, just being very honest with you. When I'm, when I'm in meetings with Pastor Schaller, it's still difficult for me to say my opinion sometimes because I just, I don't want to be like touching the ark. You know what I'm saying? I, I just, I'll be very, very honest with you guys. So, like, what we're recommending for small churches, like, okay, so you're down in D.C., you've got your church going, you're big enough, like you're starting to collect money. You've got maybe five families in the church, you got that, that's money coming in. You know, I'm saying that you know, a family making fifty thousand, they're tithing five thousand. You got an annual budget of twenty. That's like, you know, substantial. Um, so you got to operate. You're going to start renting halls, signing contracts, buying equipment, maybe buying a vehicle, maybe paying yourself. All this stuff, type of stuff going on. What we recommend is you structure the church the right way, but then you populate the board with people who are qualified to be on those boards. Okay? And if those people are not in your local assembly, you're going to find them somewhere else. Okay? So maybe you'd come back to Baltimore and say, geez, you know, Pastor Shalek, you got a couple guys that could sit on my board of elders who can correct me, who can cover me, who can be you know, the muscle that we need on the board. It's not going to go to their head um, and can, can help me until maybe some local guys are raised up who can really fill that need. 
So that's the first, that's how we recommend doing it. You know, don't do it until you can do it right, you know, and then, but sometimes you need to. Yes, sir. Uh, two, two people from Baltimore to be his elders. They don't have to be in Atlanta. They can be in Baltimore. Yeah, I mean, again, it's up to your bylaws. If your bylaws require them to be a member of that local assembly, then you're limited. If, if they don't have that requirement, um, you know, practically it's not easy to be at a distance, but you're better to deal with the distance than to deal with a guy who's not qualified to be an elder as an elder. Yes, she's going to speak for the first time. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, microphone, microphone, okay. Oh, no, you're, gonna, you're getting the mic. <clears throat> I'm just uh, thinking about that, that we have uh, small churches all around the world. Like, we have a church in Albania. And um, I know that the church there, 80% of the church is women. And right. Pastor Dennis is the only qualified man who's the pastor right. of the church. And he has young guys in the church, but he cannot put them in the position right. of an elder. Yeah. So, like, in this situation, these women are in the church, like, for nine and ten years. They are walking right. with God. So, I, I, I don't know, like, can we say that the church can gather and make decisions together? Or yeah. I don't know. And I have an opinion on that. Um, and the, the first opinion might be that um, maybe because of the legalities, you know, maybe that church wants to register in Albania and the only people that can be registered people are Albanian citizens. You know, you can't be an American and, and do any of that stuff. So you've got to use some of that people so you can function and go forward. And then the second thing I would say um, would be that and this is, this is just the wisdom that we just like, I don't want to get too weird, but just like we like weep before God to have him help us with these things. But it's like maybe um, Pastor uh, Dennis has a board and he gets, you know, maybe someone from Hungary, maybe someone to be on that board of elders to function in the church. But the wisdom of it says, I mean, you, you're, you know, when that, you're going to sit down with these people, the people, you know, and sit down with these godly, amazing people that you have every reason to believe can help you and, and have conversations and get input. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you can, you can, um, you know, you know, you know, any board of directors and you know, trustees, elders, they can alienate the people by making violent decisions that does not that the people cannot receive or accept, and sometimes that's necessary. You know, if the people don't believe the Bible anymore, keep preaching the Bible and they leave and get new people. I mean, that's, that's what you do. You know what I'm saying? But it's like maybe, um, you know, you have an opinion the church should be in this location, but the people are saying, no, nope, Pastor, it'll really work better if we do it over here. It's like you want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I would think about the question you're answering there. But that also leads into the next question that, that Grant had about women. Okay? So I'm just going to go back to the uh, source document here. And um, elders, because of what the Bible says about elders and how we think about them, um, it's, it's hard for me to think that you're going to uh, – so just as I'm reading our definition about elders here, I'm not seeing anything that would make it so that that, and I know you don't all have copies out there. I don't see anything there, but I could be missing something. And at one point, and maybe I'm thinking again of the Bible College board, uh, minutes also, um, I thought at some point in here it says that these guys, at least a certain percentage of them, have to be uh, ordained pastors. What page? Thank you very much. I was too far into it. Uh, where, where do you see it? Oh, yeah. So that doesn't say you have to be a... 
Oh, no, I'm sorry. And holds active ordination. I missed that. I, I skimmed the two-thirds of it. So, yeah, so forget that. And uh, I'm not sure if that holds up under trustees also. It does say under, under trustees, page four at the bottom, paragraph two, under Article Five, government, board shall consist of not less than three, uh, at least 50% shall be pastors holding active ordination. So I would say by definition in this church, it would be possible for a woman to be appointed to the board of trustees, okay? At least legally. Uh, would we do it? I can tell you practically we don't consider women uh, that way, um, but I'm not saying maybe in the future it would happen that way, you know? And I've been in churches before that did have women on the board, and uh, the problem wasn't that they were females. The problem is, you know, forget that. <laughs> it, that was not the problem. Yes, sir. Yes. No, oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me get the uh, mic down here. No, no, we, this is a recorded class, oh, okay. so they won't hear you. Yeah, I don't mean to start a debate or anything like that, but just following up on what Grant said about the elders, like if this is basically, what's going on? If this, this is basically uh, have to do with branch churches, right? So if he's in Georgia, if you elect an elder from the church in Baltimore, is that what you meant? That's what I'm saying. But the thing is, if an elder were to be elected to a board, that, per, that elder had to be involved in the local assembly and, and involved in the affairs of that church, even though it's a branch ministry. Are you following what I'm saying? I, I understand what you're saying. Um, and I just, in, in principle, I agree with you um, that that is by far the preferable situation when you get a guy who's there and knows what's going on and can serve. But what we're trying to avoid is the danger of raising up a young guy too fast and putting him on a board that ends up destroying him because he's not equipped to make those decisions. Well, again, here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm Grant down in Georgia. I'm by myself. Do I want to be the only guy on the board? That's, that's a dangerous situation also. So we're saying the best way to address that is to get some call. And, and again, it wouldn't be Baltimore. I mean, that, you know, what, uh, maybe a better example is, I mean, that, that's an extreme situation, okay? We're, you know, 1,000 you know, miles away or whatever, but maybe a better situation would be, um, you know, maybe you've got, uh, you know, Ben Tangy and, in, in uh, Hamden or something, a little closer to home base, and, 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 and there's enough of a relationship there so it can work, you know. But I agree, there, there can be, it, it might not work well. But I, that's, I'm just telling you how we're recommending to guys, find, hopefully there'll be someone that can help you with this, uh, so you're not, you don't expose yourself by being the only guy in the church, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, because that person doesn't exist, what do you do? You know, and that's how we are starting to talk about it. Yes, sir. If, if Pastor Shepard goes to Georgia and he raises, like, three men, like, they're going to look at him as, like, their father. So if he, if he is, is making a decision as, like, the pastor of that church, of course they're going to support him. So, like, if he turns against the scriptures... And starts preaching like legalistic, they're not going to say anything because he's their spiritual spiritual father. That's why if you bring somebody from the outside that's objective, they can stop you in your tracks if you right. start to do something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And again, we'll we'll hit this again when we get into affiliation and and all that stuff. But uh, um, yeah. And what it means, uh, like to continue this comment, that. The mm, people on the board, but not from this local body, they're from this uh, greater grace, but not uh, being on the meetings. How will they know even that pastor is off or like become legalistic? Well, that's why it's not ideal to have yeah, it's far yeah, yeah, from yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but and again, it, we'll, hit, we'll hit this topic again, but one way they'll know he's off is when people in the church start having problems, you know what I'm saying? So it can go that way too, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> Not that you've ever experienced that, just hypothetically it could happen in, in a church somewhere. Okay, now where were we? Okay, 
the most difficult problem of bylaws for a church is just balancing this. And I did want to just maybe walk through a little bit more so you know how this church operates. It's not the only way you could do it. Again, we're not bylaw police, uh, but if you're asking us, we think these are, good, these are good bylaws. Do they work in the country you're in? We don't know those laws of those countries. You know, you'll have to you know, modify them as needed for your, your local area. But um, I'm just going to spend another minute here and, and, uh, and read this. Uh, at this point, I'm wishing I'd, I'd put more copies of this out there. But I just want you to hear it. Um, uh, so we have how an a, 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 a elder is appointed. Um, okay. That's the appointment, blah, blah, blah. There's one thing I'm looking for here we're going to get to. But I thank you for bearing with me. Okay. This is, those of you who have it in front of you, page two, under A, paragraph two. The presiding elder, and that's the pastor, the presiding elder, he serves until he resigns or is removed by a unanimous vote of the Board of Elders and a concurring majority vote of the Appeals Board. Okay, I'm going to read that again. The presiding elder shall serve until he resigns or he's removed by a unanimous vote of the Board of Elders and a concurring majority vote of the Appeals Board. Okay? So reading that, I'm telling you folks that this church, I hope you were hearing it the way I'm hearing it, there is tremendous protection for Pastor Schaller. Okay? Right now we've got seven elders uh, on the Board of Elders. Of course, he's one of them. The other six would have to vote six to zero to remove him. And then once they voted that way, then we call in the appeals board and see if they agree with that decision, okay? So it's like that, that, there's tremendous strength for Pastor Schaller in terms of removal. Um, where I would say he's weak, I don't mean him as a person, but in terms of these, um, the way the bylaws are written is that he is only one vote on the board of elders. So when the elders get in a room, He's just counting on guys' respect for him, you know, uh, whatever moral authority or spiritual, you know, authority thinks he has. But then the vote happens, and he's just one guy. So, in, in, in term, again, in terms of moving the elders, he just has to do it by persuasion and by, you know, whatever type of, you know, force of leadership he can exercise. But in terms of them moving him, it ain't going to happen unless there's, there's, like, major problems. Okay, so that's how we have worked this out here. You know, um, me thinking about it, um, and again, I'm just one guy, I think that we could give him a little more oomph in terms of who he is on the Board of Elders. Like I thought about maybe he should get two votes or something like that. You know, I, I don't know how it's going to go. Um, I, and I, I know that uh, we've talked about Pastor David Moore's bylaws up in, uh, in uh, Malta, New York. I know it's different, and I think he's a little bit stronger than Pastor Schaller. You know, so again... Think about these things. You know, you know, someday you're going to be out there. Um, someday this is going to be called into question. Someday you might be a pastor and say, man, I should have more. I should have, you know, I, you'll be thinking about that. And just know that great men have gone through these, these, uh, these decisions and this process, and we continue to work on it until this day. Church administration, Pastor Bob Bridges, and it might have been, oh yeah, Pastor Land. Well, Pastor Land was doing it, and sorry, I was thinking of the inreach one. Uh, Pastor Land was doing it, and he said that Pastor Schaller was himself asked, "What would you like two votes on the board?" And so just him denying himself, like says it's not doesn't matter to me. I can just be one vote. He just earned more respect from his board. Right. Which yeah. Is like, absolutely. Which is the better way to go. Yeah. And, and yeah, and then also understand what this class is, you know, this, especially this part of this class. We're in some of the real hard nuts and bolts kind of legal stuff, but there's a whole nother side to it, which is just how a pastor ministers and serves and leads, which you could definitely get the type of emphasis you're talking about. 
And we'll talk about that also. But yeah, I mean, what, okay. I'm like, so I got two votes or I got five votes or I can do whatever I want. If I need that to lead, I mean, am I really leading at that point? You know what I'm saying? So that's the whole other side of it. And I think Pastor Charlotte takes the approach. He just wants to be a lamb, you know, and let what happens happen, you know. And then other guys might take a different approach, and I'm just not going to say what's right and what's wrong. I think we might lean over a little bit on the lamb side because we want people serving and laying their lives down and, 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 and you know, preaching. And who was talking about legalism? You mentioned legalism. And, again, this will probably come up, you know, many times in this course. But that's, I mean, you know, the, the, the insecure pastor, he leads by legalism. You know what I'm saying? You must do what I say because the Bible says you must do it, you know? Oh, great. You know what I'm saying? That's my relationship with God, you know? I don't need grace. I can do what God tells me to do. That's like the old covenant, you know what I'm saying? Do this and live. Well, we can't do it. That's why that was a schoolmaster to bring us to grace. And, and you, know, you, you know, the ultimate thing you end up with is like, okay, you're a pastor. You raise a church up. You lay your life down for 20 years, and then they vote you out. I mean, does it matter that much to you? You know what I'm saying? On one hand, it's a bummer. On the other hand, who cares? It was never about the buildings anyway. You go somewhere else, spiritual people follow you, and, and you start over again. You know, it's actually very healthy in some ways, although kind of a bummer too, you know? <laughs> yes? Um, I'm thinking about the, the love and Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I've got to get the mic going here. Wait. Thank you. Um, the the Love Maryland churches do they make their own bylaws or are they under the banner of that? Because I know that Pastor Shibley and Pastor um, Bruce Wright they're actually on the elders board if they I'm not mistaken. So how does that work with them? Well, again, uh, Greater Grace churches um, are, you know our affiliates self governing, self supporting, self propagating. You know, in a sense, they can do what they want. You know, and I. I, even saying that, it like pains me to put it that way. But uh, the, again, the hard edge side of it, they can do what they want to do. Um, I would say that we are attempting to help those people because sometimes people, just because of ignorance or because of bad counsel, things don't go well. You know what I'm saying? Um, I would say in the United States, you know, somewhere in the United States, um, we had a situation where a, a a pastor was signing checks from his church. You know what I'm saying? And we'll talk about that. But I'm just saying we're aware. We, you know, again, we don't want to step in and, and, and tell people what to do. On the other hand, we want to come alongside and help people. And if you want bylaws, this is our recommendation. Can you do it different? Sure. But you want to be affiliated. I mean, what? You know what I'm saying? So it just come, I, again, I don't want to accuse, you know, it's just there's this heart thing. Like, why would you? What's behind doing it differently? You know, you know how, did you, how do you know better? You know, tell us. Help us. You know? um, so that's, I hope that's a balanced answer to that question. You know? But um, you know, at varying degrees. But again, that's what this course represents also. I mean, this course didn't exist a few years ago. And um, what, you know, uh, you know, what, what Pastor Schaller thought, what he said, is that you know, we've done a great job training preachers, soul winners, you know, ministers, investors, but we haven't done a good job training people in some of this stuff. And the, the way it was phrased was that we have, you know, churches, other churches out there, but the elders in the church have no muscle. You know what I'm saying? So you ask the pastor, well, who are you accountable to? Well, I'm accountable to my elders. Yeah, but the elders were in no position, never been trained to do anything other than do what the guy says, so they could not provide that covering that he professed that he had. You know, which is one of the reasons why we have this course, because we, we, you know, we want you, you know, unfortunately, guys lose it out there sometimes, you know, and, uh, you know, just doctrine and just calling and interest and, you know, and maybe if we have helpful board of elders, we can, you know, keep those, keep ourselves, keep us, people in this room, you know, we're no better, no worse than anybody else keep ourselves on track and avoid some of the train wrecks that have happened over the years that are just like devastating for people, you know, you know, devastating, you know, churches yelling. And again, you know, I, church years ago I was in, I, I was, I'll tell us, tell the story again. It's like probably the worst day of my life. I've had heart pains, like chest pains, like three times in my life, two because of just work situations and then once because of a church situation, this was it. But I was, 
youth pastor in a certain church, and, and um, you know, we, I'll probably tell this story again, but just, you know, and I, I was like the pastor love of that church. I, I don't mean to brag, but like we, we lived, died with those kids. We had a great time. Um, I know if you saw Jonathan Stambovsky here a few minutes ago, he was, you know, one of those guys, David LaFlame, some very high quality guy. I'm not saying I'm the source, but it's, that's the fact of the case as they were in this group. And so, we, they were, again, we'll tell the whole story someday, but the church blew up. I'm in front of the church. We have a very unhappy church meeting. And I got this, uh, you know, teenager, you know, that I, like, died for the family and continued to, you know, comes in the back of the church. And it's like, you know, she and a friend of hers are, like, yelling at me from the back of the church, like, you stabbed the pastor in the back. I mean, this, I mean just, I'm, so I'm just telling you, if you've never seen this stuff happen, maybe you have, unfortunately, but this is how crazy it gets um, just because of demons and because of people. And hopefully we can do some things that will keep us, keep us out of those situations. Um, you know, that, that situation was really just, uh, well, I'll put it this way. I, I think I was an elder in that church and there were conversations I should have had with the pastor years before, you know, but I, would, I didn't have the backbone to do it, you know. I see if things don't go a certain way, I'm going to have to leave the church. I didn't want to do that. I liked it there, you know. But there were things I saw, things that should have been different, things that I was doing that he wasn't, I wasn't being, I don't mean backed up in, but, you know, just you're, you know, maybe you've been in this situation. You're preaching convictions that you know are right, but you're not hearing it from the pulpit, so it's like, how, how is this happening, you know. And I should have gone to the pastor and said, look, what is going on here? I never did that, you know. And then that's how you end up being accused of stabbing the guy in the back, you know, because so, you never complained. And then all of a sudden, what happened here, you know? Well, there was stuff that was in me for a long time that uh, in the crisis was finally, not, not, I don't mean bad stuff, but that's just how it went. But, but he never met, you know, the elders never met with the I mean, have elders in name, but was there ever any meeting? Was there any, ever any interaction? Did he ever sit down with his elders and ask questions? None of that happened, you know? And likewise, we didn't go to him, you know, so it stank. I'm sorry. It was lousy, you know. It was no good. So and we'll talk about how to lead and, and how to do, you know, maybe not to have that happening. Um, I think this has been a good night, okay? These, this last part is really, I, I like the questions because I want to, and again, we'll, we'll hit some of this stuff when we, when we get to these things, but just this is really where the... Uh, where it all happens, you know. This is this is you know what churches are made of. You know how we how we react in these situations. You know, and, and uh, so it's awesome. Um, email me if those of you who just are new today. And that's just so I have your email, so I can put you on the roster, all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Maverick was required, and the big one is also required. The second man. The second man, the second by man. Wally Beebe. And that's the, yeah? You didn't know. Uh, they're both decent. Who, who bought them? Did you, who got them both? Both off the internet. Yeah, what, what book is that, Maverick? Okay, so no one has a copy of the second man here, right? You've ordered it, and they're on reserve. I bought your books for you guys. There's two copies. I think three copies of Maverick and two or three copies of... Yeah, NBCNS Library. Yep. <laughs> I'll, I'll double check. I'll double check. Okay. Oh, boy. All right, no, that's, thank you for telling me that. And again, I, I'm, Pastor, I'm sorry to say this, but if you email me to remind me, I just, I walk out of here and this stuff is gone so by the time I get to my office tomorrow. So if someone can just remind me, those things are not on reserve. Yeah. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that up on my website, okay? It doesn't exist yet. And I promise not to blog. I'm just going to put stuff up for you. I don't like blogs. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. They can be good, but I just don't. Sorry, do we need the books to get credit for the class? And is it going to be critical for the final? Um, you are going to 
be required to know information from these books. Oh, no, that's not an if you want to, you should purchase. No, 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 save yourself some money, go read it in the library. Oh, both these books? You can't take it out, but it's on reserve, you can go in there and read it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to save you guys mine for you, you know? Poverty-stricken Bible college students, <laughs> you know? <clears throat> Any, anything else? I think this is good here. Well, yes? Oh, well, just what I'm saying, how you, how you balance the role of the pastor, to give him the leadership you want him to have, but also have enough around him to help him when he starts to, to stumble a little bit. There's no right answer, yeah. you know. You want me to reveal it right now? I'm, I'm going to have you, I'm going to put the bylaws up on my website. I'm going to have you read them, and I'm going to have you suggest things that could be better about them. I, I, don't, I don't want you to rip the whole thing up and say I don't, you know, but, but just like, you know, if, if, if like, like uh, Ellen, you, you saw some internal inconsistencies, right? Like if there's things that are inconsistent or just unreadable, you, you found some stuff too, Angina. It's like, yeah, yeah. And even, even I'm struggling with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, what does this really say? I don't know what that says. So just if there's stuff, and again, I don't, mean, I don't want you to spend three days on it, but just if you guys could read it, you might make some suggestions, and you might find that we would, the trustees would vote on them and, and incorporate them, you know? You could go down. Um, no handouts. I'll talk to your classmates on that, because I just don't know. Honestly, I don't remember. Yeah. I, I gave out four of them. But I didn't give out four. I'm, I'm going to put it up on the website, so you'll have it from there. Homework? Um, let, let, me, let me define that. In, yeah, yeah, I would say, generally speaking, do not put paper on my desk ever. OK? <laughs> so Father, bless us as we go. Thanks, everybody. Just give, have a great week, and we'll, we'll convene again next week. Thanks.